The constituents of our meal in a specific order, we can reduce the glucose spike of that meal by up to 75%. So you can eat the exact same thing, but if you eat the food in the right order, you help your body. You don't create as much inflammation. You don't create as much glycation. So any type of vinegar and you put it, you know, in a, in a big glass of water like this and you drink it before a meal. Now, if you do this, you can reduce the glucose spike of the meal by up to 30%. Jesse, um, in the difference what what have you um, learned on the times of the day that you eat uh, on on the frequency? Is it better when you eat the same amount of food in a lot of different meals or when you eat in three meals or when you eat in two meals? But the same amount of food, not not counting not the same eating, total, not making a deficit, just just eating fewer times, but the same amount. Yeah. yeah. So it's better to eat meals instead of meals plus snacks, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And the science shows this. I agree. You can eat the exact same total amount of food, but your health will improve if you just do meals instead of meals and snacks. And, you know, this makes sense because if you're eating every three hours, especially if you're eating things that are high in carbohydrates, you're going to be glucose, insulin, crash. Glucose, insulin, crash. And so all the time your body is going to be rising its insulin levels and you're going to start on this roller coaster. And uh, yeah, the, the myth of six meals a day seems to be disproven now from the data. However, it also really depends what you're eating, right? If you're having six meals a day, your meals are like fresh vegetables and healthy protein, healthy fats. That's not the same as having six bowls of cereal in the same day. So The, you know, we also have to look at what you're eating. It's not just how many times a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There there are actually studies that show that people that eat six times a day, they raise interleukin one, interleukin, mm -hmm. interleukin six, and TNF alpha, which are all mm -hmm. inflammation markers. Yeah. Eat the exact same amount as people that ate two or three times a day eating the same amount of food. Um, It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting, and you can and you can see it in people, and 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 also, if you eat a lot of times, then you're going to be hungrier, because if you mm -hmm. keep on spiking, spiking, spiking insulin, insulin will make you hungrier. Yeah, absolutely. Insulin also make you uh, leptin resistant, which is mm -hmm. something you don't want to be having, because then you're in, you're gonna you're never gonna start stop eating. Yeah, and Jesse. You you've been one of the one of the things that maybe is like the key point on your on your work and is the right order in which you eat. Mm. But before that, so people can understand the term carbohydrates is something like huge. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think that the 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 way you divide carbohydrates in your book. I actually have a book. I have two books and I divide it exactly in the same way. I don't, really? it, nice. I, I, I don't put it like simple and complex. No, I go for starches or fibers and for sugars. Can you yeah. tell us so people can really understand the division so then we can see what's the importance of on the, on the order? Yeah, absolutely. So all those three things, starch, sugars, and fiber, they're all made by plants and they all are born through photosynthesis. So that's why they're in the same family. It's because they all come from the same biological process. Anyway, often when we talk about carbohydrates, like in the general you know, conversation, we actually only refer to starches and sugars. And when we talk about fiber, we don't really consider it a carbohydrate like in, in common language. And that's because when you eat starches and sugars, they break down into glucose in your body mm -hmm. and fructose for the sugars. When you eat fiber, 
it doesn't get broken down by your body. You do not absorb fiber. It just passes right through. And so they're very distinct, even though they all exist under the carbohydrate family. Yeah. And so when I speak about carbs, I talk about starches and sugars. I do not talk about fiber because it makes it simpler to understand. Now that we understand that starches and sugars, they, they get break, bro broken down to glucose. And of course, <laughs> fructose com comes like, like a, the, the friend on the side always. Yeah. Tell us about what you've learned from that, from the order that we need to be eating. And Absolutely. what are the benefits of that? Absolutely. So the studies show us that if we eat the constituents of our meal in a specific order, we can reduce the glucose spike of that meal by up to 75%. So you can eat the exact same thing, but if you eat the food in the right order, you help your body. You don't create as much inflammation. You don't create as much glycation. You help your body prevent long-term disease. So the right order is vegetables first, because vegetables contain fiber, then proteins and fats, then starches and sugars. And this has mostly to do with fiber. In vegetables, you have fiber. And as I mentioned, fiber does not get broken down and absorbed by your body. Fiber actually protects you from absorbing too much glucose molecules coming down through your digestive system. And so when we eat the fiber first, we give it the opportunity to become this protective mesh that allows you to reduce the glucose spike of the meal. And this is a really simple hack. It is very, very effective. And you can feel the effects quite immediately, actually, because when you're on a glucose roller coaster all day, you're going to feel cravings, you're going to feel hunger, you're going to feel sleepiness. These are instant reactions to your glucose being out of whack. And if you use the food order trick, for example, and you steady your glucose levels, those symptoms tend to go away rather quickly. It has to be just vegetables, or it could be a salad with some mm -hmm. olive oil dressing or apple cider vinegar or it can something. definitely be dressed the, it can be any type of vegetable salad you want raw cooked um, broiled whatever don't don't have the juiced vegetables because that doesn't have any fiber anymore so it doesn't yeah. work but it can be any type of vegetables it can be like a spinach salad with olive oil and some feta cheese it can be some roasted broccoli with tahini like whatever you want it's important to start the meal with vegetables for that reason. And you mentioned apple cider vinegar. <laughs> you want to talk about apple cider vinegar? Sure. <laughs> okay. So that's another hack, which is if you, if you incorporate vinegar into your day, you're going to get some really good glucose benefits. And the easiest way to do this, and that's been proven in the studies, is to take one tablespoon of vinegar. It can be any type of vinegar, but try to avoid the very sweet balsamic vinegar because that's where oh, they yeah. find sugar. Yeah. So any type of vinegar and you put it, you know, in a, in a big glass of water like this and you drink it before a meal. Now, if you do this, you can reduce the glucose spike of the meal by up to 30% without changing anything of what you're eating during the meal. It's magic. It's really cool. And what have you seen on, on your own, on uh, like monitoring your own glucose by 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 your own spikes with apple cider vinegar and the right order? I mean, a lot because I'm a huge fan of pasta. Like I love spaghetti. And one of my challenges was like, how do I eat spaghetti without creating this big glucose spike in my body? And spaghetti is pure starch. So of course yeah. it's going to make a big glucose spike. <laughs> so I devised a, a perfect veggie starter to have before I had spaghetti. And it's roasted cauliflower, which okay. I love. Yeah. With a nice vinaigrette that I make, olive oil, um, vinegar, and a little bit of nuts. And that became my veggie starter before my spaghetti. And then the glucose spike of that spaghetti, you know, was cut, I don't know, by two thirds. It's pretty amazing when you see that. And what's even cooler is to know what's happening inside your body. So I'm like, oh, the, the fiber in the cauliflower is now protecting me from absorbing too much of the glucose. And the vinegar is slowing down the starch breakdown and is telling my muscles to up, uptake glucose as it arrives in my bloodstream. So I, be, I become kind of this, um, this partner to my body. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to eat pasta because I love pasta, but hey, I got your back. I'm doing some hacks too to help you manage the pasta better. You, you, there, there's something that you mentioned in your book that one of your friends or maybe clients, I, I don't know, someone that you knew 
or someone the, on your community, he told you that before hanging out with friends, that he would go and eat some veggies before in his house. Yeah. If, for instance, we're gonna we're gonna we'll go hang out and have a couple of beers, have a, some pizza. What's the ideal time before for eating veggies? Like, what's the window yeah. in which those veggies are gonna be like in the same? Effective. So the guy you're mentioning, his name is Gustavo, and he lives in Mexico. And he's really cool. And he, uh, one of the ways he applied this hack was, as you mentioned, before going to the steakhouse with his friends to make a big roasted broccoli at home and having that before going out. So listen, it appears that fiber will stay in this protective state for a few hours. So if you have a vegetable starter and then one hour later, you go to the steakhouse and eat a bunch of like potatoes and bread, the fiber from the broccoli is still going to be protective. We don't know the exact like number of minutes, but from my experience, it feels like an hour and a half, two hours is the the upper threshold. But that gives you enough time oh, yeah. to have a veggie yeah. start at home yeah. and then go out. <laughs> yeah, you can catch a plane. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and the same thing. You you've been mentioning that after you eat, if you do some jogging, walking. Bam. dancing dancing or squatting or any exercise it'll drop uh yeah. the the glucose spike what's what's the the right amount of time for you to mm. to work out and what's the window after eating that you can use the, the hack so you can use the hack for about an hour after eating because that's the amount of time on average that it takes for your glucose to peak after a meal. So it's ideal to use your muscles within that one hour. And in the studies, even just 10 minutes is effective in reducing the glucose spike. So you can go for a 10 minute walk. Maybe if you're at work, you can go up and down the building stairs a few times. Maybe you just clean your apartment. Maybe you dance. If you want, you can go to the gym and have a full workout as well. But just 10 minutes, even if it's light intensity, like walking, already has a, an effect on your glucose spike. That's amazing. Yeah. There, there is something that people, that I've been teaching my patients for many years, and it's about yeah. dirt. Mm. And when people say, oh, come on, I, can, I, I can't eat dessert. And I'm like, yeah, please, please do. <laughs> but eat it on your meal. Yeah. A meal. Don't don't wait some hours. Don't eat it at 4 p.m. Don't go for ice cream exactly. at 4 p.m. after. And what you've seen, what's the effect of mm. of and what if, if you eat in the right order and then mm. you in, instead of maybe eating some some starches at the end, if you eat dessert versus when you eat it like three hours after. It's, it's a huge difference because we have to remember that when we eat dessert, when we're eating something sweet, we're really doing that for pleasure. Sugar is not, we don't need to eat sugar. It's not helpful to our body, especially the fructose in it is really not necessary and potentially very harmful. So when we eat dessert, it's for pleasure. And there's a way to eat it that avoids too many consequences on your body that creates a smaller glucose spike. And as you mentioned, it's because when you eat it after a meal, there's already a bunch of stuff in your stomach. Hopefully there's fiber, there's protein, there's fats. And so the cake that you eat, for example, is going to pass through your digestive system much slower. And then thanks to the fiber and the rest of the meal, it won't be absorbed as much into your bloodstream. So it won't create such a big spike and such a big insulin spike as well. On the other hand, if you have dessert for breakfast or if you have dessert between meals when your stomach is empty, I, 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 huge spike because the the dessert goes straight through to your bloodstream creates a massive glucose spike a big dip and that then activates cravings for the rest of the day then you're going to be hungry you're going to be tired you're going to want more sugar and we don't nobody wants that like we want the the taste the pleasure of the dessert but we don't want the consequences we don't want the cravings and all that stuff so if you have it after a meal you'll still get the pleasure with fewer consequences well Jesse, we're running out of time but thank you I have a I have another question for you. What's coming I mean, next for you? Mm -hmm. I'm taking a vacation. It's my birthday next week, oh, and cool. I'm taking a vacation. Yeah. So that's next. <laughs> yeah, and then um, 
So uh, Glucose Revolution, my book, it's coming out in 31 languages and counting. And that's happening the whole rest of the year. So I'm going to be going to many, many countries to talk about the book, present it to the people there. Um, and so far, it's been going really well. So far, it came out in six languages and a bestseller in every country. It's, it's, it's really cool to see that people are responding to this information because it's truly life-changing stuff. It's simple, but it's really deeply important and life-changing. Did you see it coming? No, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. No. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I think that's easier when you don't know and you're, you know, you're naive about the whole process. You're like, oh, this will be, you know, this will be a walk in the park. No, I didn't see it coming, but I think I made a deal with the universe a few years ago. You know, the universe was like, we want you to talk about glucose. Are you, are you down for it? And I said, yes. And so now I have to, I have to uphold the, the deal. What's your biggest purpose in life? Mm. What's the thing that really moves you in your heart? People who are sick, for example, people who have type 2 diabetes, people who are, aren't able to have kids and who feel um, powerless and confused and who don't have the right information. And um, that distress, you know, is really what has driven me to do what I do. Because I, it, it breaks my heart to see that when actually the information is there, they just need to hear it and they just need to have access to it. And it's not complicated. So, uh, yeah, it's that really. Well, we're on the, we're on the same side. We're on the yeah. same side and I'm thrilled that we um, had the chance to be with you. I hope that mm, thank we, you, we have you here in Colombia sometime. It, it, I would love to. Anything. They told me that your book is going to be coming this August. So this yes. be, that would be fantastic. So just yeah. again, thank you for your work. Thank you for your generosity, your dedication. Thank you for being brave and sharing. We're living in a world full of polarity and having being that brave and that generous. I think that's something that should be honored. Mm -hmm. And um, I always encourage people to remember that the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence and mm -hmm. the kind of things that you're making you started on your own and now there are thousands of people that can validate that that it, that is true and that it well works. actually no 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 i just want to mention you know all the stuff i talk about it's peer-reviewed scientific studies i really just illustrate and i think it's a misconception people often have they think that the hacks come from, you know, my own imagination, but oh, yeah. I'm just communicating the science. However, what's missing, for example, is like long-term studies of people using the hacks. And we don't know that. We absolutely don't know. We don't have any data on there, but um, we, we, we can't turn skepticism into inaction. Yeah. yeah okay. 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 It's not a clinical yeah. trial that they took 300. On the glucose goddess hacks. No. Yeah. Exactly. But exactly. Again, the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. It's just. And you know the one I like, the saying I like, it's um, do not transform skepticism into inaction. It's like, yeah, yeah you, you, can, you can think, I don't know if this is going to work, but freaking try it and you'll see it really works. <laughs> yeah. Jesse, thank you. Thank you. Thank Happy you, Carlos, birthday. for having me. Enjoy thank your you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Gracias. Gracias. Take care. Ciao. <laughs>